Hi, I'm Mary, a librarian turned book reviewer with a focus on stories written for kids, tweens, and teens. Today, I'm excited to share with you this story called Rhea and the Blood of the Nectar. It's the first in the Chronicles of Estranthia series by Payal Doshi. This story is about Rhea, who's 11 years old. She lives with her twin brother Rohan, their mother, and their grandmother in a small house in a small town in Darjeeling, India. Now it's the eve of their 12th birthday, and Rohan has decided that he's going to go out at midnight for a secret cricket match with his friends. Now, even though they've been told that they're not supposed to go out at night, he's planning to do this, and he didn't even tell his twin sister about it. But she's pretty crafty, and Rhea figured it out. So, in the middle of the night, both Rhea and Rohan sneak out to go to this cricket match, and when Rhea returns home, but Rohan does not, it's up to Rhea to learn where he is and bring him home. This story is really beautifully written. It, in, it engages a lot of senses in similes, metaphors throughout the entire book. There's a line in here about how leaves lick her face as Rhea goes through a forest on her bike. And you can absolutely imagine what that feels like. You know, it's a wet forest and you're going really fast on your bike and these leaves are just passing by your face. And you have those kinds of reactions throughout this book. It's beautifully written and it straddles fantasy and reality. So even for readers who are not familiar with India or Indian culture, they're going to find a lot of engagement in this book as they go from reality to fantasy. It includes a lot of references to foods and clothing and intergenerational family dynamics. And there's a glossary at the back that helps with pronunciation and understanding of these potentially new words and phrases. What's nice is that even though it's there and it's great, it's not necessary all the time because of the way that these words and phrases are interwoven into the book itself. So as readers are going along, they're really immersed into this world, both the reality and the fantasy version, and the puzzles and the connections are really uh, captivating and um, and engaging for readers. So now this story is written for a more advanced middle grade reader, a more confident middle grade reader. Uh, there's not a whole lot of white space. The text is pretty small, but for those confident middle grade readers and even into young adult and adult readers, they're really going to love diving into this story, figuring it out, seeing how all of these characters are connected and figuring out how and if Rohan is going to return. What is really nice about this book is that there are maps at the beginning to kind of help orient readers to where this story is taking place and the puzzles within it are um, laid out really well also so as you can see some of the text is designed in shapes um, and that's really fun as readers are going along as well and there's also beautiful illustrations at the beginning of each chapter kind of getting everyone into the mood and the feeling of the chapter that is to come now, I'm also going to talk about just how beautiful this book is. It's a lovely hardcover. It has a ribbon bookmark in it. And along with all of the illustrations, it's just, it's really hefty. If you're into things like Harry Potter, where you've got that, that book that's going to sit on your lap and you're going to read it and really get into it, this is a book that does exactly that. So whether or not you have familiarity with Indian culture, this book is a really great way to invest in it to learn more about it while engaging in a really lovely story. If this sounds like a great fit for you, I really hope you check it out at your favorite bookstore.